I must confess to being furious. To think that there are still some of you who find it permissible to spit upon our rules. Remember their names. Fasal and Avis. They've betrayed you, betrayed us. And today you will see with your own eyes what'll happen to those who betray our cause. Go on, Avis. Pierce his skull with the thorn in your hands, and then push in the Aqua Dolores. Of course, you will do it one drop at a time. Let it do its magic again and again, and don't stop until you've pushed all of it in. That's all. I'm sorry. It... It's okay. I'll... find a way to endure. Oh, shut your wretched mouths! When did I give you permission to speak? It will come to those who dare to disobey! That's enough, Dugier. Your rabid screams have been beyond nauseating. <gasps> Is that... His Grace? Oh, Risley. I knew you would come, but I didn't expect you to be so quick. Must you still refuse to let me be? Did I not spell everything out for you already? What's so blasphemous about sharing a slice of the cake with me when you've already got the entire fortress at your feet? It would seem that you can't see the difference between sharing and looting. And on top of that, look at your people. Are they not starving as you wolf down your cake? You. Stop acting all high and mighty like some hero of justice! Have you forgotten? Nobody in this blasted fortress is innocent! We are all irredeemable monsters who have destroyed something that others held dear. What's so wrong about punishing those who deserve to be punished? It's what they've always deserved. And please, are you really gonna tell me that you care about their lives and well-being when you just need a supply of labor to keep this place running? Is it that all you need to keep your cushy life? Sadly, you're wrong on both counts. Unlike you, I've never seen them as currency. The fortress is not only a place for confinement, but also a place for rebirth. Just as people are free to give in to the darkness within their hearts, they are also free to seek redemption and a new beginning. Our bodies have limits, but our spirits will always remain free. They may have made mistakes, but they are still human beings with people and things that they cherish. And most importantly, they should always retain the freedom to choose their own path once they've reflected on their past misdeeds. But you... You're destroying their spirits with fear, taking their freedom away so that they'll become slaves who will never again feel or think. And you say that's what they've always deserved? You are nothing compared to them. He... he's really mad. You think me arrogant, Risley. Well, I think you're too young and naive. You understand nothing of this world. Nobody actually sees this fortress as any kind of just a wonderful place. See it for what it is. A dumping ground. forever! No prisoner will listen to you out of gratitude of their hearts. The whip is the only way to make them obey. Had you been just one step slower, I would have already taken control of all the garden mechs in this place. Your vision gives you strength. But how long will it hold against these powerful constructs? <laughs> you talk big, but in the end, you know nothing outside of power and control. In that case, let me give you a small taste of what real power looks like. Face your guilt! Not bad. A moment, please. What? Go! Bombs away! Yeah!
Let's begin it. Let's get a little chilly. If you think fear can control everything, well then, terrify me. Don't high road me! You're just another crook! And it's time you got treated like one! <laughs> What's the matter? Too scared to shoot straight? I, I'm warning you! You should set an example! Funny how that slipped my mind. Well, from this point on, you can forget about that rule. The rules of the fortress are there to keep the likes of you in check. But if the Duke wants somebody dead, he needs no justification. Understood? Sorry for taking so long. Did I keep you waiting? If you ask me, I'd say I actually feel very helpless. There's no way that I could truly empathize with the fear that the members felt every day. I could comfort and compensate them all I want, but it might still not be enough to repair the damage that has been done. I have to take responsibility for it, as does the fortress. Even I wouldn't be able to find humor in a situation like this. So, do you have a plan for how you're gonna deal with him yet? Oh, Dugier? I've already got an idea. For now, I think I'll do nothing. Huh? Why? I think it's a very fitting punishment for him to have to imagine the sorts of punishments that will soon be coming his way. He'll be left in the dark with regards to both the dates and the details of his punishment. Of course, that's not to say that I'll be letting him off scot-free. It's not often that I actually get the chance to be creative with my punishments. I'm going to talk to the members of the Society. He'll get a chance to experience everything that he's ever inflicted on them. Paimon didn't know you could also be so harsh! Looks like she should watch her tongue when she's around you in the future. Why do you think I'd do that kind of thing to you? You offend me, Paimon. Anyway, jokes aside, thank you so much for all of your help. There's still a lot for me to take care of, so... How about this? I'll treat you to a meal in two days at the Coupon Cafeteria. We should have a better handle on things by then. Uh, no, Paimon's had enough of that place. Don't worry, it won't be the same old welfare meal. I'll make the necessary arrangements. Oh, then you've got yourself a deal!
Ah, you're here. Paimon never forgets about meals. Even if the traveler forgets, Paimon will remind him for sure. Oh, that's not what Paimon meant at all. Risley, you got what Paimon meant, right? Hmm? I'm a little confused, actually. Hey, not you too! Jokes aside, I've got some good news. After taking a look, the doctors have let me know that it shouldn't be too difficult to extract the thorns which means that everyone should be able to recover after a period of rest. As for their mental recoveries, most are making good progress as well. We've added a few who were more severely affected to a special observation list. You sure got everything taken care of, Risley. I try my best. After all, it's my duty to take care of everything that happens within my territory. Please, go ahead. Ah, that's a bit of a long story. I once had a similar experience. It had to do with the host family I lived with as a child. I was an orphan, adopted by a couple with a great deal of love in their hearts. I had many siblings, and we all adored each other. Once we were older, Mom and Dad would turn us over to be individually adopted by families of greater means, and go on to adopt more young children. They were perfect parents. Or so I thought. And then? And then, I found out we were merely raised as livestock. Once we had reached a certain age, our parents would bring us to the market for sale. All children that were sold would leave the house, and nobody would know what became of them. As for those who didn't sell, they were merely disposed of. Did you know I once considered myself an extremely lucky child? And all of my friends, all of my siblings, they all felt this way as well. I was also not the first to find out about the truth. All those who found out before me were simply added to the disposal pile. I could never shake the feeling of irony every time I juxtaposed their tragic ends against me. My parents created a facade of joy, lied to satiate their desires, and even employed incredibly cruel methods to keep their grasp on power. They did all of that, but never considered how their actions would utterly ruin all the children they took under their wing. Worse, perhaps they never cared about that at all, but I did. So in the end, I killed them and set all of the remaining children free. I was convicted for my crimes and exiled to the fortress of Meripede. Ah. My methods were extreme, yes, but I was still a teenager at the time. I'd been betrayed by those I trusted most, and I didn't think that more moderate ways would solve the problem. My doubt and helpless anger pushed me forward until I got what I deserved. It's all right. You don't have to tell me what you think. I've already committed to this path, regardless of what anyone may say about it. The least I can do is to make sure that the same tragedy will not happen again in my new home. Sorry to disturb you, everyone. Oh, it's a visa for soul. Are you two feeling better yet? It was all because you arrived in time. I managed to escape unscathed. We came here on impulse today, because we were hoping that you'd be able to lend us a hand, Your Grace. Please, go on right ahead. I'll do my best to help. Within reason, of course. It's... 
I'd like to be wedded to Avis here at the fortress. You're getting married? Yeah, we met each other through the society and both fell into Dugier's trap. But even during our time there, we never doubted each other. We always believed that Dugier was manipulating us, trying to make us mistrust each other. And after this incident, we've come to believe that we've found the one for the rest of our lives. <laughs> you could say we managed to make the best out of a bad situation. He didn't abandon me, and I didn't forsake him either. But we're still both prisoners. And we also aren't sure if the fortress is the best place to host something so celebratory. So we are just wondering, is our request a bit too out of line? Hmm. You're right in that the fortress has never hosted a wedding before. But that's no reason to say no, is it? I'll help you make- oh, We can't thank you enough, Your Grace. We are actually also planning to stay here after the conclusion of our sentences. Yeah, we've already made tons of special memories here. So now, it'd be too hard to leave. And we have full confidence in the fortress's future with you at the helm, Your Grace. Your trust is the highest form of praise. Hey, loosen up a bit! Shouldn't you be the happiest man in Tevat to hear that people would like to stay of their own free will? Yeah. I'll always take a genuine expression of faith over any obligation to obey.
Let the record show that I verbally consent to relinquishing these items into your possession. This is order. Stabilize.
funny feeling that we might be in for an interesting time if we go check it out, shall we? I see. So you believe that this warning letter was sent by the Phantom Weasel? Absolutely. I've said it before and I'll say it again. The Phantom Weasel never acts as you expect. He must have faked his own death ten years ago using a body double. Now that he's back, I'm sure the guards who worked on his case back in the day are in for a headache, but however this turns out in the end, the one thing it won't be is boring. Couldn't agree more. As a journalist, I'm gonna get a lot of mileage out of this one. Thank you, sir, for your time. Now, whom should I interview next? Oh, oh, hey! What a coincidence! Fancy meeting you here! Perfect timing. So, the Phantom Weasel's latest warning letter. What are your thoughts? Yeah, this is the first time we're hearing of this one. Could you clue us in? Huh? Oh, oh, sorry. Yes, this case is from a decade ago. I guess he wouldn't know about it. Well, not to worry. You're in good hands because I'm a professional. The story goes like this. Ten or so years ago, a phantom thief became active in the court of Fontaine. Known only as the Weasel, nobody knew his true identity, and the authorities never managed to catch him. Wow, cool! He sounds like one of those mysterious night burglars that you read about in novels. Precisely. Well, except the part where they actually have a good reputation. Our weasel targeted whatever people held dear, and no one was safe from his predations. He would just as soon steal a necklace from a rich merchant's safe as he would a toy doll given to a commoner child for their birthday. I know. The phantom thieves you read about in novels rob the rich to pay the poor, but this guy did not discriminate. Unsurprisingly, this didn't work wonders for his public reputation. Every man and his dog wanted to see him behind bars. Yeesh. So, uh, did they catch him? Um, not exactly. There's a good chance that the weasel would still be at large to this day if it hadn't been for an accident ten years ago. A magician named Caesar fell to his death in a botched high-altitude escape performance. When the police went through his personal effects, they found a hoard of stolen loot and gadgets used for criminal activities. And that was how the Phantom Weasel's identity was revealed to all. Sure enough, thefts in Fontaine went down after Caesar's death. But today, ten years on, the notorious thief has once again issued one of his warning letters and pasted it on the gate of the Opera Epicles for all to see. I had to squeeze through the crowd this morning to get a photo as soon as I heard. Here, it's this one. So, this is the warning letter, huh? Let's see what he wrote. Three days from now, when evening falls, I shall take from you that which you hold most dear at the Opera House, just as you did to me ten years ago. This is, without a doubt, a clear declaration of criminal intent. After years of laying low, the Phantom Weasel is back with a vengeance. What once seemed like an open and shut case has been blown wide open again. But why has he re-emerged now? And what does he want? I sense an epic scoop. And I'm going for it. Uh-oh. If this thief will steal anything that other people value, does that mean even we might be targeted? doesn't want to get kidnapped. Well, he'd have to go through you first. You would stop him, right? Okay, the people have spoken. It's clear that the public are very concerned about the Phantom Weasel's reappearance. Let's see, I've got a photo of the letter, my interview notes. Yep, that should be enough to form the skeleton of my article. It does feel like something is missing, though. Something exclusive. Who should I interview next? I need someone with a more concrete connection to the weasel. Hmm. <gasps> is that who I think it is? Lenny! Hmm. 
Magic. Magician. Caesar! <gasps> the Phantom Weasel! That's it! Let's go interview Lenny! You see, the original Phantom Thief Caesar was a magician too! And what do Phantom Thieves and Magicians have in common? They both have an air of mystery about them. Perhaps there's a connection there. Are you serious? What sort of a deduction is that? Oh, relax. My journalistic instinct tells me that an exclusive news story is beckoning. Let's go. No time for delay. And I'll let you in on my secret. Magicians have a special skill called telepathy, which means we can read other people's minds. Really? Then, what am I thinking now? Well, first you need to relax, because I can see that you're clenching your fist in your mind, as if to say, no, I mustn't let him guess it. Aww. And now you're getting a little flustered. You're trying to find a way to empty your mind, to think of nothing at all. But the more you try to hide a secret, the easier it'll come out. You snuck out from home today, didn't you? You told your family a little lie so you could come out and play. Now, now, that's not a good habit. Y you can tell? Uh, oh boy, you really can read my mind. Of course. Oh, and that's the end of my performance. You should really be heading home. Remember to apologize to your family, all right? They must be worried about you. Uh, all right, got it. Bye, Mr. Magician! Uh, hey, Linny! Why, hello. We meet again. Are you looking for me? What's the situation? Well, why don't you guess, Mr. Telepathic? Oh, please. You didn't believe that spiel, did you? The power of telepathy is quite beyond me. I'm sure that child would beg to differ. Seemed like you were right on the money. That was nothing more than a little trickery. I made an educated guess based on his micro-expressions. That, plus the fact that he was the only kid here without his parents, and he looked as guilty as sin. He made it easy for me. You guys, on the other hand... Hmm... Let me guess... Don't tell me you're here for the Phantom Weasel, are you? Wow! Cut it in one! Is this more of your trickery at work? Wait, really? <laughs> no, no trickery this time. It was pure luck. His warning letter's been the talk of the town, so I figured that maybe you were asking around about that. Bingo! I plan on writing a column reporting on the lake. So, Linny, what are your thoughts on this infamous thief's reappearance? Hmm... To be honest, it makes me angry. Angry? Why? You read his letter, right? The Phantom Weasel claims he's planning something in three nights' time at the Opera House. That's the night I'll be performing there. <gasps> Wait a minute! You don't think he's after you, do you? Well, if he is, then his warning is clearly a direct challenge to me personally. And if he's not, then it's still going to be a huge headache for me. The mere mention of the weasel's name is enough to scare people off. So once the contents of that letter get out, barely anyone will be showing up to watch my show. But I've been preparing for this for a long time. I'm not about to let him ruin my big day. This leaves me with only one choice. I have to expose the Phantom Weasel's identity before the show begins. Really? So what you're saying is, we might get to see a live duel between a famous magician and an infamous thief? Wow, this has exclusive written all over it. To be honest, I'm not sure if I'll emerge the victor. The Phantom Weasel is a notorious crook, infamous for his inscrutable methods. You're being far 
you're too modest, Linny. I think your magic tricks are even more inscrutable than those of a thief. Thanks for the compliment, though I have to say I don't care much for the comparison. A lot of people liken magicians to thieves because we both have the ability to make things disappear without the person noticing. But there's an important difference that these people overlook. Allow me to demonstrate with a quick magic trick. Here, I have a flower, just an ordinary flower that was picked not long ago. Watch it carefully now. Three, two, one. Oh, it's gone! That's the question. Where did it go? Therein lies the difference between us. Thieves make precious things disappear, but only magicians make them reappear. If I could now invite you all to check your clothes, there might be a surprise in there somewhere. Don't worry, I didn't take offense. I just wanted to take the opportunity to perhaps change some of the preconceived notions you might have about magicians. Since Caesar's death, a lot of people associate magicians with criminality. It can be quite frustrating. I can imagine. Um, coming back to your trick just now, might I presume that you are well versed in floral symbolism? For example, magicians often use rainbow roses in their flower-related performances to represent passion and romantic encounters. But you used a Lumidu spell, which, if I'm not mistaken, allude to separations. I'm curious to know if there was any deeper meaning behind this choice? Impressive knowledge. It's no wonder you're such a successful journalist. But I'm afraid I don't know the first thing about floral symbolism. I'm just in the habit of using Lumidu spells in my magic. It sounds like something I should look into, though. Hmm. I'll buy myself a copy of Fontaine's Floral Language Facts when I have some time. But it'll have to wait until this phantom weasel business is behind us. Well noted. In that case, this brings us to the end of our interview. I, for one, am looking forward to the final showdown between you and the thief. Please feel free to get in touch to update me on any further developments. Otherwise, I will of course see you at your show in three days' time. But let's hope the Phantom Weasel is caught by then. If there's nothing else, uh, I'll be off. You've given me lots to work with here, and I've got no time to lose if I want to write that exclusive piece. I'll see you all later! So, uh, Lenny! Are you going to tell us how you did that flower trick now? <laughs> I'm afraid that's my little secret. Aww. Well, magicians are entitled to their secrets. But Paimon's really itching to know how it's done. You feel it too, right? So itchy. <laughs> Not so itchy then, huh? Well, since you're so concerned, how would you like to serve as my temporary magician's assistant and help me investigate? Magician's assistant? Oh, that sounds fun! Assistants are technically magicians too! Also, it'll bring us one step closer to figuring out how that darn trick is done! Shall we go for it? Excellent. Thank you for putting your trust in moi. The first thing we need to look into is who Caesar really was. If he truly was the Phantom Weasel, that means that the Weasel is dead, and whoever wrote this warning letter is just a copycat criminal. But if he wasn't the Weasel? Hmm. Well, that'll make things more interesting. 
It would mean that the weasel lives, and he's been laying low all this time in some corner of Fontaine. And if we're investigating Caesar, his fiancée Gemma is a good place to start. Word is that she visits the cemetery often, so I asked Lynette to wait for her there. We should make a move. Let's go and rendezvous with Lynette. Do I spy a traveler and a Paimon? We were just talking about you. This is more serendipitous than finding Mora after face planting on the road. <laughs> it's been too long. I'll bet you have some thrilling new tales from your journey to fill me in on. I can see it in your eyes. Excellent. <laughs> I knew I could count on you. What were you talking about before we got here? Something fun? Or oh, something delicious. <laughs> we were talking about one certain traveler and how two's company but three's a crowd as the inseparable duo tore around to that, making four friends here and five more there, often at sixes and sevens as they brave the lakes and seas, collecting pieces of eight and countless other treasures. <laughs> they clearly must have nine lives. Wait, wait. What the... It just gets worse and worse. Shortly, you may attend a grand banquet at Stonegate. All will be dressed to the nines for majestic food and fine wines. And after eight long drinks and seven shorts, they'll each write six lines five times. You've been to all four corners of the world, so in three short seconds, can you guess from these two stanzas of one speech each what this event is about? It's a poetry gala, and Mondstadt and Liyue are hosting it together. Do you still remember the promise I made to the distinguished director who here during the Lantern Rite? Oh, something about writing poetry together? That's right. At the dinner table that night, I just knew this young bard was a rare talent with exceptional taste. You know, it's rare to encounter such a kindred spirit. And now, I finally seized the chance to collaborate. It took me much trekking across the land to petition Eugene Terrace and contact the Knights of Favonius, but eventually, in the spirit of friendship and poetry sharing, I managed to successfully organize the neighboring nation's congenial poetry gala. Bit of a weird name. Lua's poetry is known far and wide, and Mondstadt is the city of wine and song. With two nations teaming up, it'll be double the fun and a great chance for people from both places to get to know one another. Hu Tao and I will be the co-hosts for this poetry gala. Of course, I haven't studied the various forms and formalities of Liyue poetry for very long, so please forgive my dreadful performance just now. Not at all, Venti. You followed my lead most excellently. <laughs> you flatter me. Well, this sounds like fun. Let's get involved! I'm sure you'll be amazing! Remember that time in Liyue when Paimon gave you the first half of a couplet? Wind rises, winds never churn. You came up with the second half right away! Oh, looks like someone's got a knack for this. Perhaps we'll have to raise the difficulty a little. Alright, so basically you guys are here to discuss the activities for the poetry gala, right? Oh, looks like little Paimon's brain has gained a wrinkle or two. You guessed it so effortlessly, but... You still guessed it wrong. Huh? Wait, Paimon guessed wrong? We came here hoping to invite a special guest. I already told you, I'm not going. Xiao, you're here too! Never having penned a verse myself, how could I hope to judge the poetry of others? Besides, afflicted with karma as I am, the raucous atmosphere you are cultivating is precisely the kind which I must avoid, as you well know. Hey now, there's a first time for everything, right? We all start from itsy bitsy spider, but give it a shot and you'll be wandering lonely as a cloud in no time. And you don't even have to join us in person if you really don't want to. You can just watch the party from a nearby mountaintop and uh, cheer us on. 
But at least head down and take a look first. It's right by the inn, and there's plenty of fun activities to get involved with. It can't hurt to take a quick walk and check things out. Besides, with the renowned traveler here, what is there to fear? <sighs> I'll consider it. It's nearly time. Why don't you all head to the venue and take a look around? Quite a few of your friends should have arrived by now. Yes, that's right. Venti and I still need to discuss the poem for the opening ceremony. So, uh, we'll catch up with you later. <sighs> Plus, our adeptus friend might need a bit more convincing. Uh, we'll see if we can coax him down. Gotcha! We'll be on our way then! <laughs> Of that for an opening. Yes, yes, I like it. But if we could give it a bit more oomph, it would be even better. I think we should lead with a bang, dip into a slippity slide, then whoosh into a whoop whoop boom! Got it? Got it! <laughs> Completely understood. Wow, it's so lively! Didn't think there'd be so many people here already! And a lot of them are familiar faces! Let's go say hi! Hmm? Well, look who's here. This poetry fest seems to have attracted talent of the highest caliber. Hey! Shincho and Chanyun are here too! I was actually heading into the mountains to train, but he accosted me on the way and dragged me here. Oh, how your words wound me. Is it not the responsibility of an exorcist of Liyue to ensure that this celebration of friendship between our two nations stays free of evil spirits? Besides, this is an excellent opportunity to meet heroes who have come from far and wide. Surely, you must be curious as to how that heroine of Mondstadt was able to lift such heavy objects like they were but a feather. Are you talking about Noelle? Yeah, she's super strong! Oh? Well, since you are so well acquainted, could we trouble you to introduce us later? Okay, fine. But don't forget to help me with my investigation like you promised. That's the only reason I agreed to come at all. Huh? What investigation? <clears throat> Naturally, I could never forget such a thing. My word is my bond. Relax, dear Paimon. All will be revealed in time. Uh, okay. Are you sure that wasn't really an evil spirit? Open your mind to all possibilities, and I'm sure you will find the answer. I suppose that's true. Hey, wait a second! You're not planning on telling everyone here, are you? event on behalf of the cat's tail, and I'm also here as a mixologist representing the Mondstadt wine industry. You're... representing Mondstadt's wine industry? Oh, you must be hating every minute of it. Of course I hate it! But it's also a perfect chance to destroy the reputation of Mondstadt's wine business once and for all! Opportunities like this don't come around every day, you know. Huh? How do you figure that? <laughs> All I need to do is add some gross ingredients to the drinks, and I can create the most disgusting 
instant concoctions imaginable. <laughs> Nobody will ever buy wine from Mondstadt again. <laughs> uh, Paimon thinks you'll end up getting the opposite result. Huh, just you wait. I ain't about to mess this up. Are you gonna write some poetry with us, too? Poetry? Hmm. I've heard plenty of bards sing in the tavern before, but I've never tried writing any myself. You should join in! It'll be fun! Fine. If I have time. Now, should I try adding loach pearls or horse tails next? Oh, wait! Since we're in Liyue, mm, I should add some Jueyun chilies! Ha <laughs> ha! Nah. 